Hi, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to be drawing an upside down version of Igor Stravinsky by Picasso. And the purpose of this drawing is to use contour line, but also to start really thinking about slope and direction rather than the subject itself. Um, and in order for that to be easier for us, we're actually going to take another sheet of paper and we're going to cover uh, sections of our drawing as we draw. So we're not really thinking about um, the subject uh, of Igor, but rather only a, sec uh, a slight portion. <clears throat> as we're drawing this, I want you to think about the picture plane and the size and width of the picture plane and how it matches and is the same ratio as this bigger sheet of paper, 18 by 24, than this uh, 8 and a half by 11. And what I would like for you to do is to think about how far away certain things are from the edge of the paper and how much space it occupies so that we can um, start uh, this drawing. So for me, uh, if this is the edge of my uh, paper that I'm drawing on and this, this is the edge uh, of the drawing that I'm working from, then this line would probably start at about here. I'm going to just move this around with me so that um, so that I can see. So from here, I'm going to draw a vertical line again using contour line. Then I want to think about how this curve um, is here, and I think that that curve starts about you know yay on that line, and probably um, I think I extend this line just a little bit further, something like this. And then it very quickly slopes downward. From this curve, I see a line. It's almost making like the letter K. And then a little bit lower, there's two other lines. And then a line that's doing something like this, creating this little triangle, then uh, going at an angle. Um, coming down almost vertically, but not quite vertically, a little bit to the side. Then there's a thickness to whatever this thing is. And then it turns into a trapezoid. So I feel like my trapezoid is maybe a little bit skinnier than, than that one. Then there's another form here. Um, another angled line. From this form, starting at about here, there's a line that goes up. This one almost connects to that line. Then there's another line that is creating a triangle, and then a line that almost is uh, connecting right to the edge of where those connect to this line, but not quite. There's a line that does something like this. And then from here, something that goes more horizontal. The spacing between these two might not be quite right. I feel like that line should have been a little bit lower. And then something that goes like this. Then there's a little bit of a, of a gap, and then a line that kind of curves and then turns to the right. One that comes out of there, creating a triangle. Another one that does something like this, and down and something like this. And then a line, there's a squiggly line and a vertical line. I think the vertical line starts about here. Squiggly line is doing something like this. Okay, so now that I've done this section, I'm going to go down and I'm going to reveal another part. About the, I'm trying to do it about the same um, amount, reveal each the same amount each time. And so I feel like to here, where I have this piece of paper, is about the same relationship as this much of the paper. So this line that's covering the paper, I'm going to try to keep it around there. So this line, it first was horizontal, and now it's moving a little bit to the left. This curve got really close to this line, and now is curving this way. This line maybe extends just a little bit further and then makes a big curve, connects to this line almost to the edge, and then comes back. 
I'm going to extend that. They, this seems to get a little bit closer together. Like, so it seems wider here than, than here. And this, hmm, it, it curves, but there's quite a bit of distance between here and here. It goes something like that. And then I'm looking at where this starts on the other side of this kind of pole. It curves and does something like this. About here, there's a line that goes almost horizontal, but it's actually at an angle. It comes down a little bit. About like this. There's a line that kind of goes here. Then from this um, this form, a little bit lower, there's a line here, a line above it that kind of goes up and then down. I feel like I didn't quite do this right. I feel like it's actually supposed to curve and attach a little bit differently. Oh well. Let's go back to this section. So I have this little guy. It kind of comes up and it comes in and makes a curve. From here, there's two lines. From here, it kind of goes straight. Oops, doesn't quite connect there. Something like that. I feel like my spacing here probably needed to be wider. Maybe I brought this line in too far. So I'm going to curve this line, add these lines that are at an angle, and then go in here. And again, I feel like my spacing here might not be quite right. So here, it kind of deadens into some curves. They're not exactly where they're supposed to be, but I'm just going to keep going. And they might be, like these lines might need to be a little bit higher, but it's okay. So now I'm going to reveal a little bit more. And I think I'm about halfway. So this is about halfway. So I'm going to try to keep everything in this space. Let's see, I'm going to continue this section. What happens here? So this kind of attaches right to the end of the jacket, a little bit further away from that, but it kind of turns into this cuff. You know, sadly enough, now I can see it. Uh, sadly enough, because I feel like, you know, this is where you start to think about what you're actually drawing, and sometimes that can... Um, it not not be as useful as when you're just looking at the forms. The purpose of this exercise is to is to look at forms specifically. Thinking about where the circle starts in comparison to that form. Then I want to create these cufflinks that kind of look like keys. Then let's see, where can I start here? There's a wrinkle here. This finger continues this way, this way, line. This is the top of the finger, but the top of that finger is actually supposed to be over just a little bit. Just something like this, there's some wrinkles, that, then this other finger intersects, 
meal of it. The other side of that line. And then the edge of the hand. This starts here. I like this little negative space. I feel like that's going to help me a lot to understand what else is happening and where that thumb is, which is pushing down on the hand, kind of flattens out it's the nail. Okay. Kind of made his hand go further into his cuff than maybe it's supposed to be. Mine's going to go up from this part of the finger. Those lines kind of connect. This is the cuff lane. Goes down, touches, comes back up, or the cuff itself, not the cuff lane. And creates this rectangular shape. <clears throat> the inside of the cuff. Length goes around the wrist, the button, the outside of the jacket, this thing, thing kind of curves right here. I don't see the rest of that form yet. Okay, then let's keep going. So the top of this ends around here, then goes in, curves, curves down, makes a little loop-de-loop, -loop, curves and connects, curves and come up, comes up, makes a V, curves this way and then that way, curves this way, and hope that I'm right, that I only have that much left to go. I might lose a little bit of his head. From the wrist, this goes up and over. I'm a little bit worried about extending this line yet. I almost want to wait and just see how everything else is going to connect first and see if I am placing like this <clears throat> handkerchief in the right spot. I feel like the spacing isn't quite right. Let's go on the other side. That's this side. This from the thumb. You can see how off my spacing is in here. From the thumb, this kind of goes up, and then there's a button. The button's actually here. I'm going to put it a little bit higher because I don't have room. Uh, this is going to go here, extend upward, cuff. This line, this line, this line, this line. Just another set. Same thing this way. I can finish this form. This is his elbow. It curves up like that. <laughs> curves this way. This one comes in. Go back to the middle and just think about what else I see uh, around here. One, two, three, four. This can come up, this can come up. <clears throat> this is the jacket. And then right around here, I think, is where his tie starts with these polka dots. And then there's a button here. And that part of the jacket kind of goes like that. Okay, so now I'm going to give myself a rest and uh, see how I can, how I'll do. So I left off right at that V. So this is going to curve this way. This is going to connect to that form to create the shoulder. This is his chair. This is the top of that. 
Oh my god, it was his head. It's too bad. I like I wanted to draw his head. Here's his collar. Maybe I'll get a part of his head. That would be nice. I'm going to use the negative space to draw this tie. See if I can get it more correctly uh, sized. I'm going to use the same on the other side. One, two, one, two, down there, dot there, smaller dot there. This one, one close to it. Yep, okay. The top of this. Something like this, and then it kind of curves. This one curves and goes to the edge. This comes out, comes in, comes out, comes in, attaches. Oh, it actually attaches to his chin. And his chin is here. And from his chin, the jacket comes out. And this is his shoulder. I think it's supposed to attach to those lines. It doesn't quite get me there. Let's see what I can do with the face. So here's this curvature. Again, I'm going to use negative space to kind of draw this part of his face so that that's somewhat cor the correct size. I don't want to underestimate or overestimate his face. His ear is kind of curving this way. He has a little bit of a double chin, maybe one more here. This goes down, this is somewhere in here. His lip almost touches this curve, flattens, goes in, comes down, curves up, down, this way. He has lines on his lower lip. He has like mustache lines. Then his nose starts around here, exits, curves, has a bump, curves again. His glasses start here on his, at his nose and his eye shows up side of that. His uh, color part of his eye, his upper eyelid, the upper part of the face or the eye, eyeglasses, they intersect and come down. There's the bridge of the glasses, a wrinkle. His nostril is super interesting. Curves, curves up, curves down to a curly. Q, that, eh, this is lower, this is bigger, <laughs> um, ears probably bigger too, line, 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 let's do the inner eye, from here, this curves down towards the nose, there's a line, inside of the glasses, it's a curve that goes like that, starts Connects to the very end. Pupil, the glasses finish that pup part of the pupil. I didn't quite get there. Upper part of the eyelid. And I think that's about all I'm going to get of his head. So here is my Stravinsky. And let's turn him and see where I probably over-exaggerated him. So I feel like I started pretty pretty good. And then there's something that happened here that made him a little bit, uh, not it, this jacket not as wide as it needed to be. Um, but, and maybe I made his head just a little bit bigger than it's supposed to be, but 
It's not bad. I feel like all oh, this whole top could have got just a little bit smaller. But otherwise, I see myself following those lines pretty pretty well, thinking about that curvature, um, that slope. Again, all, all things that I want you guys to pay attention to. So hopefully this was useful to see how, how I approach this drawing. Thank you.